ever heard of a house so haunted that Zach Baggins, the lead of Ghost Adventures, had to tear it down? That's exactly what happened to this home in Gary, Indiana, known as a portal to hell. So where did it all start? In 2011, a mother of three, LaToya, brought her family and her mother, Rosa, to live in the house. However, things started to get weird really fast. It started with flies, a large amount of flies, that would swarm around the house even in winter. No matter what they did, those flies would not die. After the flies, things got weirder. Locked doors would open, objects would fly across the room, open doors would slam shut. The family would often hear footsteps when no one was there and find wet boot prints that they did not leave behind. It only progressed from there. The family started seeing shadow figures appear around the house. It was even said that some of their religious items were smashed. The children were beginning to lose sleep and miss school because of all the strange occurrences. As time went on, the haunting became much more physical for all the family involved. Stay tuned for part two. Back to Gary, Indiana's Hell House. When DCS was called, the caseworker and a nurse witnessed a very strange event. They claimed that they witnessed one of the boys walking backwards up a wall. Eventually, police came to check out what was happening at the house, but they also had strange occurrences. One of the police officers decided to take pictures with his iPhone, but none of the pictures turned out right. He captured strange orbs, mist that wasn't there, and weird blurs in the picture. He also decided to take a voice recording while at the house. Upon reviewing the recording, he heard a voice he didn't recognize that just said, Hey. After a lot of struggle and three failed exorcisms, the family was finally able to move out of the demon house. That's when Ghost Adventure star Zach Baggins bought the house, intending to do a documentary on it. He completed his documentary, however, time at that house caused him to be so ill that he decided it was best to tear the house down. Today, people believe the site is still demonic and priests are often getting called for help. Share what haunted house story you want to hear next in the comments. Creepy Things, Part 92. In 2010, city officials in Tokyo went to congratulate the oldest man in the city on his 111th birthday, only to find him dead. Upon investigation, they determined that the man had died 30 years prior, when he had confined himself to his room to become a living Buddha. His family left his mummified remains in his bed, while they collected his pension of over 9.5 million yen, or about 109,000 US dollars. My Zoom teacher keeps telling me to tell my sister to stop running around in the background. I don't know what she's talking about. I live alone. Fuck no. The babysitter asked why I didn't mention the two other children. I only have one. I found a dead body in the trunk yesterday. Which is strange because I remember putting two in there. I was having a staring contest with my doll. I won. I won. <laughs> I went to my friend's house and I needed to use the bathroom and her brother gave me a water bottle. I said thank you and told my friend her brother was nice, but she said she doesn't have a brother. Who was that boy? At least he was nice. I woke up to hear knocking on the glass. At first I thought it was the window, until I heard it come from the mirror again. Getting rid of all my mirrors, got it. Really weird things caught on drones that are absolutely unexplained. These guys were just flying their brand new drone around out in the middle of nowhere. You can see there's absolutely nobody around and they get to the edge of the forest here and they zoom in. Look what they find right here. There's this creepy lady in a white lab coat. Follow for I'm not, I'm not down for that. And I blame. <gasps> okay, I'm free. <gasps> oh my god. Did you see that? Oh my god! To us, no. So it's not like bad. In <laughs> what it is. That. And.
<laughs> what? Oh my heart. You'll have doors opening and closing, drawers opening. A little blow on the back of my head. The lights stopped working on the elevator. That's terrifying. I'm on Long Island, New York, where 19 bodies were found in shallow graves to follow the tracks of the killer, getting ready for Lifetime's new movie, The Long Island Serial Killer, A Mother's Hunt for Justice. Mary Gilbert's daughter, Shannon, was an occasional escort who left for a Long Island date and unfortunately didn't make it home. A mother's instinct is unmatchable. She immediately knew something had gone wrong. Because of her persistence in solving her daughter's disappearance, they found the other victims. You can join me in learning more about this chilling case for the premiere on Lifetime, February 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Urban legends from every state. Murfreesboro Mud Monster. Located in Murfreesboro, Illinois. Here's the story. It was summer 1973 in Murfreesboro when a couple who were out for the day parked near a boat ramp where they saw a large non-human figure approaching them making strange noises. They told the police, but of course, they didn't believe them, until they went back to the scene and discovered multiple large footprints. A few others reported seeing this creature, and then it disappeared. What do you think? Is the mud monster fact or cap? Oh, and also, which state is next? Angels watch over us, especially those buried under. But they all peek back out in spirit from their slumber. Their beautiful tombs help them cluster, and we are never, ever alone. The iron tombs protect us from scavengers of the night. But the spirits are all around, no matter what night. Today we're talking about the boy in the box. In February of 1957, a college student came across a box with the remains of a young boy in the woods of Philadelphia. Police were called and the boy was found badly beaten and put inside an old box. His identity was unknown. Many people came forward with information regarding the case, but police were not able to verify anyone's testimony. A woman named Martha came forward and said that her mother had bought the boy and made him a victim to many forms of abuse. What made police take interest in Martha's story was her knowledge of details that hadn't been released to the public. She claimed that before the boy was beaten, he had eaten baked beans, which the autopsy showed was true, and that he had been bathed as well, which seemed true because he had pruny fingers. 
Though everything she said matched the evidence, her history of mental illness made her an unreliable witness. The identification of the boy's remains remain unknown to this day.